Now then, as more of you are going to be going back to flying, uh, let's talk tonight with Todd DeFernis. He's the CEO at uh, GTC Group and the author of The 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare. We'll mention that here in passing in just a moment here. But uh, uh, something that has uh, come out of all of this, Todd, the, uh, the airlines calculate their fuel required based on uh, average passenger weight. And they've had a figure for that. And they have a feeling that maybe after a year of the pandemic, uh, that figure is just a tad low. What do you think? <laughs> Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And I got to tell you, I actually chuckled out loud when I heard the song on the intro with uh, Frank Sinatra. It was kind of kind of cute. It was funny. Uh, well, I think it's interesting. Uh, here's a fun fact for you. I, uh, in preparation for this, I thought it'd be interesting to see, you know, how to quantify the moral outrage of getting weighed before you get on an airplane versus getting a mandate, having a mandated vaccine. And I thought the the information was interesting. About 637 million search results about getting weighed before getting on a plane after two days of the circular coming out from the FAA. Only 352 million search results for the mandatory vaccine. So apparently getting weighed before you get on a plane is far more invasive than getting a vaccination. Interesting. Uh, and again, we should note, by the way, that what they plan on doing is uh, to uh, uh, sample uh, a number of passengers uh, on a flight, uh, just a percentage. And if you object to you being weighed, then they would simply go to somebody else. So it's not like uh, uh, you step on the scales or you don't uh, step on the plane. It's not quite that bad. But I mean, I mean, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I'm a big guy, and uh, frankly. Nothing would please me more than to have the airline have a pretty good idea of just what they were hefting long up there. Because, frankly, the idea of being at 35,000 feet and uh, them having to pull over and look for a service station doesn't strike me as a great idea. You can weigh me 50 times. I don't care. Well, they're actually talking about having people step on scales uh, that might be embedded in the floors. And, you know, they've got all sorts of exotic ideas here. But your point is well taken, and it really could be a safety concern. The issue actually derives back to earlier because most of these calculations were done, you know, 30 plus years ago. And we, as Americans, and quite frankly, the world, have gotten bigger. We're taller and we're rounder than we once were. And the stats are actually pretty terrifying when you think about it. Right now, there are only three states and D.C. that have an obesity rate for their adult population that's below 25 percent. Now, that's worth repeating. It's late at night, and people may not be focusing entirely. And a lot of people are saying, what did Todd Furness say? <laughs> okay, I'll go with it. We'll go with you one more time. There are only three states and the, the uh, District of Columbia, collectively four different geographical areas, with an obesity rate of less than 25% of their adult population. There are only six states, I mean, there are six states with an obesity rate of greater than 35% of the population. And just to remind everybody, obesity is characterized as anytime you have a body mass index or BMI of greater than 30. So this is a very significant problem, costs about $150 billion a year to the American economy. And we don't uh, even need to get into the, uh, the various uh, health-related issues that uh, attach there, too. So we're talking here primarily about uh, the, the, uh, the public reaction. And I find it interesting that, that there would be a, a bigger public reaction to, to being weighed uh, as opposed to, let's say, getting getting a vaccine. It's not like they're going to uh, to tattoo this figure onto your forehead. <laughs> no, that's true. But I do want to underscore one thing. 78%, according to the CDC, of all people who were hospitalized, intubated, or who died from COVID were obese. Now, that is another interesting figure. 72% of those who died of 78%. COVID, 78%, I'm sorry, were, were obese. Who were hospitalized, intubated, or died okay. were obese. So the you. issue okay. is the, the real catalyzing fact for, for COVID was not COVID itself. 
It was the fact that COVID would latch on to the other problems associated with obesity, high blood pressure, uh, other organ failure, cardiopulmonary issues, et cetera. Interesting. Well, we'd be curious to hear how people feel about the notion. Uh, would uh, uh, being weighed uh, deter you, even though it would not be aimed at you per se, but simply to help the airlines update their uh, their figures uh, for the average weight of a passenger? Uh, would that deter you from flying? It certainly wouldn't deter me from flying. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. Our number one eight six six five zero five four six two six. And uh, please continue. Yeah, so I'm the wrong guy to ask Jim because I uh, have about seven million miles on American Airlines. Not making that number up. That's an actual number. Mm -hmm. And despite that, I've actually had seven separate life-taking plane crashes in my family. In fact, I lead my book off with the story of my parents, my mother and father, who were actually killed. In, my, my father was killed in the plane crash uh, in uh, the worst aviation accident in Georgia's history. Wow. Uh, well, it does uh, unquestionably happen. I, I know a handful of people who've uh, died on, uh, on plane crashes, so it, uh, it absolutely happens. But again, uh, for the record, uh, the weight... Uh, of an average adult passenger and carry-on bag uh, will be increased to 190 pounds in uh, the summer and 195 pounds in the winter. That's up 12% from the 170-175 figure that has been used in the past of these new FAA standards. And airlines would have to increase the average weight for uh, for female passengers and carry-ons from 145 to 179 pounds in the summer and from 150 to 184 in the winter, according to the standards. The weight for men with carry-ons would go from 185 in the summer to 200 pounds and from 190 in the uh, winter to 205 pounds. So, again, they're trying to get accurate figures here, and it uh, it doesn't strike me that this is a, a, a terribly... Uh, Again, intrusive idea. Go ahead, weigh me, weigh me all you want. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. And we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show at one eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. As we talk a bit about the proposal that there would be uh, airline. Uh, airlines uh, asking you to be weighed on uh, your next flight just to uh, readjust their calculations of what is, in fact, the average weight of passengers. And uh, we're talking with Todd Furness, the CEO at GTC Group. That is the website is uh, gct.group. Is that right, uh, Todd? It is, yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, here's a call from Rick in Seymour, Indiana. Good evening. Hi, Rick in Seymour, Indiana. Good evening. <laughs> Are you there, Rick? <laughs> well, I can hear him breathing, but uh, uh, see if we can get Rick's attention, and we'll try him again in a second here. Uh, Todd Furness, let me ask you this about uh, 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 questions of uh, whether or not uh, you think this is necessary. I mean, uh, I would think that... Uh, that, uh, that maybe th there, there could be some questions about the absolute uh, need for this. Uh, and, for example, so, uh, one a logical extension of this might be, uh, oh, uh, pay as you weigh. In other words, uh, uh, I've heard it said that the airlines can, they don't, but they can charge you more if you take up two seats. And I'm wondering if, uh, if in fact, uh, it would be fair to, let's say, charge you more for weighing more. Well, the airlines actually have the ability to charge you for fully for two airplane tickets if you take up two seats. So, yeah. yes, that uh, that rule does exist. Although, if it's been tried, it has it has not worked well for the airline because it's a public relations disaster. I and if you think about it, what you heard, you know, in your earlier remarks, and you were spot on with regard to the numbers you reported. It's basically 15% for men and 20% for women, and the stats are, are pretty terrifying. I mean, four out of five African-American women uh, are characterized as obese, and three out of four Latina women are characterized as obese. So that you know, it really has become a, a problem for our nation. Uh, let's try Rick in Seymour, Indiana, one more time. Hello, Rick. 
Oh, Rick dropped. Well, okay. I hope that was an enjoyable experience for you there, Rick. All right. Uh, so we're, we're not just talking here about an airline uh, concern, if you will, about uh, about uh, fuel uh, capacity and the like. But uh, in a way, I suppose you could uh, deem this a, a public service of sorts, although I, I wonder how many people out there are, are, are obese who, who don't realize it, really. What do you That's think? That's a way of looking at yeah. it. It's a, a charitable way of looking at it. Sure. Yeah, I think that uh, it, uh, it honestly uh, would be in that regard. Uh, uh, I don't know that any other uh, uh, form of uh, transportation cares that much. I don't think that the uh, the Greyhound bus people or uh, Amtrak have ever gone down this route, uh, have they? And I'm curious if you happen to know if if this has become a matter of uh, public policy in in other countries, uh, let's say, flying. I haven't seen it yet, but, you know, to give you an order of magnitude, the U.K., whereas we have about almost 40 percent of our adults qualifying as obese, uh, the U.K. only has about 25 percent of their adults qualifying as obese. So it's not a not the same acute matter in some of the other countries. We haven't done a comprehensive analysis of this, of this yet. But I think at the end of the day, the, the next question that ought to be asked is, hey, how do you keep track of this and what do you do about it? And the answer there is, I write in my book, is – we need to get a lot closer to our primary care physicians and see them regularly because it's really easy not to step on the scale every day and it's really easy not to be aware of incremental change. But every now and again, it's going to creep up on you. So you ought to stay in touch with your primary care physician and have them keep data that so that they can map this so that you can catch it when it's five pounds instead of 25 pounds. I understand that at one point, uh, one man – uh, was charged $150 for taking up extra space on a flight, and uh, the internet uh, exploded on that. So uh, again, I mean, I mean, why not? I mean, right? Somebody's paying for that fuel, so why not the people who are causing the problem? Well, and the other issue is, at the end of the day, it, you're creating, you know, the they're creating discomfort for other passengers. It's not just taking up two seats where you know you you can't sell the second seat. It's you know, you're spilling over into into another seat and making a, a fellow passenger physically uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh one eight six six five O Jimbo, one eight six six five oh five four six two six our number. And uh, by the way, if you missed any of tonight's show or would like to hear some of our previous shows, be sure to check out the Jimbo Hannon show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you look for a podcast. One eight six six five O Jimbo, one eight six six five oh five four six two six. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. Lenny Kravitz there at one eight six six five zero Jimbo one eight six six five zero five four six two six. As we have Mary Jo calling in from Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, I just want to say maybe this is a good idea. That I'm not sure exactly what they can do, but I was coming back from Italy to Atlanta, which is a long flight, and a day flight, and I got sat between two people that were pretty big. Mm-hmm. They weren't really spilling over to my seats, but their arms were really big around, Right. and so I've got one on both sides, and then when it came time where they brought the food tray around, my elbows were literally almost by my belly button, so I could try to eat even. And I thought, well, next time, I'm just going to have to fly first class. And then I thought, why should I have to pay first class just to be comfortable in a mm-hmm. seat? Yeah. They made a Mary Jo sandwich out of you. Well, I mean, that that's something a lot of people experience, uh, Todd Furness. Yes, you're, she's actually right. And the you know, you've know you got challenges. If you sit on the aisle, then every single person that rocks by bounces off of your shoulder. And if you sit in a... Uh, on the window side, then you're completely trapped. So if you're in the middle, you, you're any better off. It's just really a difficult situation. Uh, Gary in Durango, Colorado now. Hello, Gary. Hey, Mr. Jimbo. How are you this evening? We're fine. Thank you. Hey, I'm a six foot five white male. Um, I, I weigh 245 pounds. I bench press 465 pounds. I'm not obese, but just... Uh, you're big. Okay. I want to talk to you about your collar and, you know, I don't mind stepping on a scale either. I just don't want a special tax for a large individual like myself to get on the airplane. So Mm. thank you for listening. All right. Very good. Well, there's an interesting thought. There are people, of course, who are just large who are in pretty good shape, and I suppose they could feel differently about this than somebody who was, let's say, uh, uh, 
flatly overweight. A 6'5", a 245 in shape doesn't strike me as uh, as necessarily obese, uh, Todd Furness. No, and you're absolutely right. He wouldn't be characterized as obese. And one of the challenges with using a BMI as your standard unit of measure is the fact of people like him who are in fact in shape and right. you know being six five and two forty five is is a good weight on that frame with a lot of muscle yeah. on them in all probability. Yeah. So the body mass index is intended to, to characterize your your body fat percentage. Yeah. Uh, tell us uh, what's in uh, your book, the sixty percent solution: rethinking healthcare. I try and really move everybody towards more of a consumer model in healthcare, and to take more uh, more proactive. Uh, stances in their own health care needs. So get to your primary care physician more rapidly or more, and more often. Um, do what your mom told you, which is eat right, sleep right, and get some exercise. I don't know about you, but my mom was always telling me to go outside and play. Maybe she wanted to get me out of her hair, but uh, that's important. And then uh, really to be a consumer, one of the problems we have is that with insurance having been set, set playing such a dominant role, Nobody really cares about the price of anything anymore because you just care about your copay and your deductible. And we've created essentially a layaway plan for health. And so we've got a third party uh, in addition to the government uh, who intervenes as, all the time as well. But that insurance company intervenes into the relationship between the doctor and the patient, and it causes prices to skyrocket and information exchange to be dramatically diminished. So I advocate people being more consumers. I advocate a lot of use of health savings accounts, which is tax advantaged. Everybody wins when that when people put money into their tax, uh, HSAs and then pay for their costs out of out of those HSAs. Uh, and that we and then I further advocate for less regulation of the healthcare industry altogether. You also have a, a podcast called uh, uh, Civil Discourse. Is that right? I do. Thanks for mentioning that. It's really skyrocketing. I'm really flattered that people are taking it onto that. Uh, it's been out for 11 weeks. We just had our 11th episode uh, host, uh, posted this Tuesday, and it's over 100,000. We've got over 100,000 views in that short period of time. It's been really fun. Yeah. Uh, are you uh, concerned about uh, about this country uh, long term? We we seem to uh, to be accepting uh, the fact that we're overweight, and it doesn't seem to be leading to a great deal of uh, of corrective action. And of course, uh, school systems right and left have abandoned any pretense at physical education. I am I'm very worried about it. I'm worried about the country for a whole bunch of reasons, and obesity is merely one of those many reasons. But uh, that, <laughs> plenty of fodder for another show, perhaps. But yeah. the obesity concern is is very very worrisome. It has long term implications for our nation yeah. and for every individual. And we really got to get our you know get yeah. get our, our arms around this. Uh, we we this need problem. to do that very much. So uh, stay on the line. We'll speak off air. Todd Furness is the author of the Sixty Percent Solution. He's the CEO at GTC.Group. I'm Jim Bohannon, and this is Westwood One.